Praise the name of Jesus Christ. A consistent believer is one that we know they do things for God not just out of emotions but out of conviction. Hawafanyi mambo kwa sababu hisia zao zinawasisimua but they do things for God knowing that even when they don't feel like they will still do it. Hata wakati emotions zao ziko basement too bado wanaendelea kufanyia Mungu kazi. Praise the name of Jesus. Unajua kuna wakati tunakuaga basement two emotions eh? Praise God. Ama ni mimi peke yangu najipatanga hapo. Ya, yeah? wagapi washa jipata basement two Hawa hawaski kama you know wanataka kufanya chochote kwa ajili ya Mungu. Basement two inamaanisha emotions zako ziko chini chini ya chini. Haujiski mpaka unaenda negative. Praise God. Ushawahi jipata pale? Praise the name of Jesus. Even then, tunajua msimamo wako ni upi katika Kristo. We know your stand. And we can predict and tell that you are actually standing for God even when you don't feel like. Consistent believers believe in God even when their financial status reads negative. Wagapi wameenda kwa bank and you found that your balances are negative meaning that you even took what you call it an overdraft or you took a salary advance and those are things that are discouraged believers from taking unless you have to tell your neighbor unless you have to tell your neighbor don't take salary advance to go and buy meat Come on guys, now you're refusing to talk. Tell your neighbor, Pastor Gigi, say it. Tell them, Pastor Gigi, say it. Don't take a salary advance to go and buy meat or to go and eat pizza. Praise the name of Jesus. Ati kwa sababu kuna terrific Tuesday, sasa unaenda kuchukua, kwanza unajua hii wiki diyo watu wanachukua ga salary advance. This week. Eh? Yeah? Yeah, ni ile wiki. Eh? Yeah? Na terrific Tuesday kifika your 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 what do you call these things? Your the taste glands zinakuwa aroused. Praise the name of Jesus. But even when your account in the bank is reading negative, your love for God remains intact. That is what I'm talking about this morning. Paulo anatuambia nini? Philippians chapter 2 and is a very powerful chapter. You know, I wish we would read all of it from verse 1. It's a very powerful chapter that talks a lot about commitment and particularly giving us an example of Jesus Christ. Who the Bible says being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God as something to be taken advantage of. But he humbled himself to death, taking the very form of a servant. He humbled himself to death, even death on the cross. And the Bible says, for this reason, he's highly exalted, given the name above all names. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth. And the Bible says, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Look at Jesus, giving us a very perfect example. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. You know, in one of the verses, it says that do not consider yourself to be better than others, but regard others to be better than you. You know, and the Bible is telling us a lot about commitment. I wish I had time to, to, to talk about these things. But let me narrow down to what I, 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 I really feel I can manage within the short time that is remaining. Paul tells us in verse number 12, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but much more so in my absence. What is Paul telling us? Let's put a comma there. What is Paul talking about? Paul is talking to us about Philippians that were obedient to God, not just when they were being seen. Najokuna watu ni watifu sana. 
wakati wanaonekana lakini wakati hakuna mtu anawaona they are directly opposite wait until the boss appears they are all over in the office doing everything including removing cobwebs na wanajua si kazi yao because wanataka ku create impression but wakati boss ameondoka they turn out to be the worst of all workers Paul is not talking to us about such people Paul is not talking to us about people that lift up their hands in church to worship just because pastor is around no He's talking to us about believers that worship even when nobody is looking at them. Wanajua maisha yangu ni maisha ya kuabudu Kristo. So I worship him in the morning. I worship him at night. I worship him in the streets. I worship him at the backyard of my house. Hiyo ndio Paul anaongelelea. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. My dear brethren Just as you have always obeyed not only in my presence but even much more so in my absence. Yaani hawa wa Kristo walikuwa wana 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 obey sana zaidi wakati nobody is watching them. Praise the name of Jesus. Ask your the person sitting next to you what kind of an obedient believer are you? Praise the name of Jesus. Yani Philippians would obey not because Paul is around to see them. No. But because they understood the calling that they had received. They understood what God had put in their lives. They understood Christian journey is not a journey that you walk today and tomorrow you abandon. Ah uh ah. -uh. They understood Christian walk is a walk that requires consistency in obedience day one to the day end. Hiyo ndio Paulo anasema. He tells them just as you have always obeyed not only in my presence but much more so in my absence. Alafu anaweka hyphen. I I hope your Bible has a hyphen after that because mine has. Inaweka hyphen. Inasema Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. People that are obedient children of God, consistent believers will continue. I'm interested with the word continue here. Continue, they will continue to work out their salvation because salvation is work. Tell your neighbor salvation is work. Mnajua kuna joto kwa hivyo lazima nikae nikiwaambia muongee otherwise mtalala praise the name of Jesus you know salvation is work we have to continue working it out kila siku na wakovu sio rahisi that is discouraging eh but it's a discouraging fact wakovu sio nini sio rahisi ah ah wakovu ni kazi It requires determination. It requires decision. It requires dedication. It requires somebody that decides I will work it out day and night. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Alafu anatuambia nini? For it is God who works in you. Verse number 13. For it is God who works in you both to act and to do to will both to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose what does that mean that god has a purpose as to which as to why he called every one of us kuna sababu ambayo ilifanya mungu akuite haukuitwa tu you know it was not a dabla kadabla no You know it was not davivi a davivi ah uh -uh. there was a purpose there was a reason as to why god called each one of us now god works in us 
in order to fulfill that purpose that he created and called us for. And you know what? That purpose can only be fulfilled once you continually obey. Once you consistently follow your calling. Once you are faithful to walk in the ways that God has called you. Then he says, do everything without grumbling or murmuring or arguing. You know, I don't want to talk about that. But I have believers who murmur and they argue over everything. Tell them, Nwewe utawagosa ibada Sunday. Mimi. That's what they say. Mimi, Mimi. Hi. Kwani yakuna mtu mgini anaweza ugosa? Praise the name of Jesus. Tell them you will be the usher during Sister Sunday. Hai, siwache wengine wafanye kazi. Kwani mimi na asha kila wakati. You know? Tell them, niwe utachemshia praise team maji. Wanasema, kwani hakuna kazi igine nzuri ambayo naeza fanya? You know? They always argue. They are so argumentative every day. Praise the name of Jesus. Tell them to come to church. Uambia wafike church saanine. Pastor nafikiria hatuna kitu igine tunafanyaga. Nisipokuwa kuja kanisani. Yeah? Na ni kwa sababu ya kwa full time ministry Na hajui sisi tuko na biashara Hajui sisi tuko Let me tell you They will argue and argue on over everything And the Bible tells us Do everything without murmuring or arguing Praise the name of Jesus Consistency does not give you room for argument Do you know how what policemen do? You know, I hear, I don't know, I've never been to a camp, to a police camp. But I hear that when you tell a policeman to jump, he jumps fast. While he's in the air, that is when he asks you, how high do I jump? They don't first ask you, why am I jumping? Or how high should I jump? But when the commander says jump, they jump. When they are up, they, they, they ask, how high? I wonder how it is possible for them to add the height when they've already jumped in the air. But that is the narrative. You know, maybe Kevin should tell us. Praise the name of Jesus. Don't argue over everything. Consistency requires you to be such an obedient child that does the things that God won't done without arguing. Because only then only then that you become blameless and pure. We're in verse number 15 now. So that so that you become blameless and pure. Children without what? A blemish. Sasa kwa sababu ile biblia haiko sasa nini hamsomi. Ya? Si usome yako. Bwana suwe sana. Verse 15 says you know, so that you become blameless and pure children without blemish or so that you become children without oh, blemish, fault. Right? Children without blemish. Imagine Watoto wengi wakona blem, blemish, wakona fault, wakona makosa. I don't know what the Kiswahili word says, you know. Wakona makosa, wakona dosari, wakona kasoro. Why? Because they keep on arguing, they keep on being inconsistent, they only obey when they can be seen. They are not such good children. They have a lot of blame. But Paul is telling us that we be children without a blemish in this rapt and crooked generation. And then he says, in which you shine among them like stars in the sky. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Have you imagine ukiwa katika ulimwengu and then unanga kama nyota in the sky. Sky ni, ni anga, eh? Ama ni nini? 
praise the name of Jesus. Yeah? And you remember those days, chairman, you know, when we were trying to woo girls and we would tell them, you are the only star in my universe. <laughs> praise the name of Jesus. Yeah? You are my only star in the... You know? And then the girl would be Feregeshe. The whole night she can't sleep thinking that it is true that she is the only star. Sister Eunice. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> yeah? Praise the name of Jesus. But God is telling us that we shine like the star in the... In other words, dunia imeja giza. Dunia imeja giza. Lakini sisi sasa tunakuwa dio mwanga wa ile dunia. By our being obedient. By our being consistent. Tunakuwa sisi dio tunaleta mwanga katika dunia ambayo imeja giza. There is hope in us. And that hope is what we drive to the lives of those that walk with us. If only we become consistent. Praise the name of Jesus. Verse 16, the last verse. As you hold family to the word of life. I am interested with the word hold family. As you hold family to the word of life. What to consistent? They hold firmly the word of life. They don't just let go. And it will be real the next 10, 15 minutes. And you will see why I'm saying that. They hold firmly. Unashikilia. Vanaswesana. Unashika. You know, if you come from where I come from, some of you cannot understand these things because you come from Naivasha, where there are no hills. You know, and the roads are good. Where we come from, as the car goes, as the vehicle goes up the hill, unashika, unashika chuma vizuri. Because anything can happen. It is so easy for the car to throw you out through the window. As it swings across the, the ditches and, you know, unajishikilia kabisa. Afadhali wanguke na gari ukiwandani. Kuliko gari ikurushe nje. That is called holding family. Praise the name of Jesus. Imagine, Paul is telling us to shikilie the word of life. So family, bila kuyachilia. Why? Because there are so many things that can easily make you let go of the word of God and the word of life. Mambo ambayo inafanyika katika dunia hii are things that can easily make you live even the faith. Ile ushuhuda tulikuwa tunasema utukio wa dogo Ya kwaba si jaona chochote abacho kinaweza kunitoa katika wema wabwana Huo ushuhuda umekuwa stale It is stale, trust me It has expired It's no longer true Let me tell you, every day There are more reasons that can get you out of the love of God Than reasons to keep you I would rather be real and candid with you Unataka kuniambia wiki hii ujakutana na kikitu kinaweza kukutoa katika wema wa Baba Kimari. Kunayo nyingi sana. Mimi naionaga kila siku naambia Mungu God nisaidie. Help me here because if you don't come. Woi. Praise the name of Jesus. You know? It's all over. From my TV to my phone to my to, to my car on the road. The people in the matatu, even in the bank, everything. Imagine pack a bank when advertise pesa. I have nothing against you guys. But when advertise pesa, na wasichana wakiwa uchi, half naked. Unashagaa pesa lazima yoneshe wasichana wanaonyesha huku. Praise the name of Jesus. I mean, I have every reason to live salvation every day. Even before I leave my house in the morning. Because the memes that come up. You know? Praise the name of Jesus. Masababu ya kuto, I mean, ya kuwacha wakovu na kuwacha neno la mugu ni megi sana. Lakini Biblia inatuabia nini? Hold family to shikilie the word of life. 
consistent men and women hold firmly the word. They say it doesn't matter how hard it is to remain born again. I am no giving up. I am no surrendering. I told one of my friends yesterday when he told me, hey, God seems to be taking too long. It's so hard to wait. And I told him, no surrender, no giving up, no turning back. Three words I told him. You know, yesterday I told him, no surrender, no turning back, no giving up. We will wait and hold on until we see God manifest his promise in our lives. Praise the name of Jesus. Even if everybody else gives up, Mimi, I have made up my mind. I am not going to give up. Unless I become very stupid. Okay, you got it. The others did not get it. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Unless I become very... Wagapu wa meshikanisha. Bwana isu asue sana. Tell your neighbor you are not stupid. Tell your neighbor you cannot be stupid. Praise the name of Jesus. We do not give up, but we hold on to the word of life. And the Bible says that gives Paul a reason to boast on the day of Christ that he did not run or labor in. Let me preach to you in 10 minutes and then we are done. Christian journey is a pilgrimage. I don't know how now I say that in Kiswahili. Pilgrimage. Kuna tofauti ya jane na pilgrimage. A jane takes a short time. Pilgrimage takes long. You know? So Christian journey is that of a pilgrimage. Ni safari defu sana. It doesn't take you a day. It doesn't take you a month. It doesn't take you a year. In actual fact, it will be exactly 35 years tomorrow from the day I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I got saved on the 22nd of September. I mean, on the, 20, on the 23rd of September. Not 20, today is 22nd, yeah? On the 23rd of September, 1989. That would be 35 years tomorrow, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes? Praise God. So are you going to sing happy birthday for me tomorrow? Okay, let me be nasty. Are you going to give me birthday gifts tomorrow? <laughs> Kevo says, no, 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 no. Okay, I'll call it too. Praise the name of Jesus. But imagine somebody walking for 35 years, born again. The last time I got saved was 35 years ago. 35 years. Hmm? Before more than half of you are born. Am I saying half or three quarters? Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> How many of you were born 35 years ago? You know, I mean, just a handful of us. Even Pastor Apollo was not born. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, let me tell you, it's a pilgrimage. 35 years of walking in salvation is no joke. I've seen everything that a man can see in this life. And that is why I say I have a hand, I mean a, a whole lot of reasons as to why I should have left salvation. Blessed be the name of Jesus. But because I understand salvation is a pilgrimage, not just a small short journey, then I have to keep my faith until I get to my destiny. The kingdom of God. But you know, unfortunately, this pilgrimage has a lot of challenges that come. Sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes, I'm now reading my notes, it is tiresome. Sometimes it is weary. Yes, sometimes it's lonely. There are times I felt so alone. Until I've wondered, is there another person around me? In fact, one time I asked a friend of mine, do you ever feel alone? You know? And he's a, he's a weird one. I hope he's not going to watch this video. But he's a weird one. He tells me, no, never. <laughs> and he tells me, I have the companionship of my car. 
You know, he's this crazy guy. I tell him, your car is your second wife. He loves his car so much. And he tells me when he feels stressed, he just gets into the car and drives. You know? Praise God. So I asked him, do you ever feel lonely? Because that time I was feeling alone. And then he tells me, no, I have my car with me. Imagine. But for me, I think I'm a normal human being. I think he's abnormal. I hope he's not going to watch that. But I think for me and for you, we feel lonely at times. In this journey, you wonder, do, does everybody else go through what I'm going through? You know, you become like Job in Job chapter 23. That when I go to the north, I do not see him. I turn to the south, I do not catch a glimpse of his presence. When he's, when he's at work in the, in the west, I do not see him. And you feel alone. The lonely, I mean, the journey can be lonely enough. Until sometimes you doubt, is God still in my life? Am I still properly saved? Am I still that, that darling to him that he promised he would never leave me or forsake me? Sometimes you feel lonely. Sometimes you get tired. You get weary. Yes. This week I've been singing, and I, I think this is why this message was born. Because this week I've been singing funny songs. You know? I've been singing, it's not an easy road. We la 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 la. You know? That's what I've been singing. It's not easy. And then he says, no, no. It's not an easy road. No, no. It's not an easy road. You know? But when Christ is with us, he makes the journey become easier. Because sometimes we get tired. And you feel like you want to surrender. But even then, God requires you to be consistent. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. After you're so weary, after you don't have strength to move, that is when he comes and says, even the youth grow weary. Praise the name of Jesus. But they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Shall renew their strength. Alafu unaweza kuendelea. Bwana isu atukuse sana. So this journey requires a lot of consistency. The journey is long. It takes a lot of time. And sometimes it's hard to predict. Imagine. It's very hard to predict when God is coming. Yes. Anakwambia, I am coming soon. But you see, like I always mark, make fun and say, I'm like Jesus. I tell people, I'm coming to see you soon. And the soon could be one month. You can be sure I have people on my waiting list. They've been waiting to see me for a month and they haven't managed to see me. I've not managed to squeeze time for them. And I wonder, if I am like that, how about Jesus? Aki, this Jesus Christ, he says, I am coming soon. And soon is over 2,000 years now. This Jesus says, I will surely bless you. And you have waited for the blessing. I don't know for how long. Aka kwa hidia takupea kazi. Na yo kazi imekawia. Sasa unafaa kuwa ukipanga retirement. Na bado huja anza kazi. And I can guarantee you, he's still coming. Praise the name of Jesus. Aka kuambia takupea bibi na watoto. Sasa unangalia miaka imeanza kupanda. And you're wondering, God, am I going to be the second Abraham? But I can guarantee you, even then, he's still coming. Because sometimes the journey is long and very hard to predict. Praise the name of Jesus. He promises to bless you financially. Give you a car, a home. Kama wewe ni kama mimi, you even have dreamt the kind of a car that God is giving you. Wakapi wa meota hile gari wanafaa kuwa ukiendesha. Kwa nini mimi na otaga peke angu? Jesus Christ. Okay. Thank God we have two more witnesses. Three. You know, mimi nilikuwa naota even when I had nothing. That's why I keep telling my friends, there are only two cars that I will buy. Two. Every other is a by the way. Yes? The day I buy a Mercedes, you know I have bought my first car. 
The day I buy a Range Rover, you know I have finished buying cars. Because nimeota, si mara kumi, si kumi na tano, sio ishirini. Praise the name of Jesus. And the more you dream, the more the dream looks a little far. Inaonekana ni kama ni hallucination. Inaonekana ni kama sio ukweli. Because sometimes the journey takes longer than you expect. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Wakini wanu hata mmeota, mahali unafaa kuishi. Kuna mpaka driveway imewekwa rami. Imagine rami kwa compound yako sio cabros rami. You don't understand the difference. Kuna tofauti ya kuweka cabros na kuweka nini? Rami requires you to get a contractor on site. Akuje na machine na, na rami ipikwe mahali inapikiangwa. Iletwe those of you that don't know rami inaretagwa ikiwa imepikwa ikiwa hot haiyekagu ikiwa baridi ukiweka kidore chako hapo ndani unatoka ukiwa nyamachoma yani you even have dreamt uko na driveway iko na rami but right now mahali unaishi ukikanyaga mguu mmoja nje ya pili utakuwa ndani kwa neighbor unajiangali unashangaa hii maisha bwana what is this god where are you praise the name of jesus yeah, because the distance between your door and your neighbor's door ni kutoka hapa mpaka hapa ni ukuta tu imegawanyisha. So ukikanyaga frame ya mrango yako, ukanyaga mguu moja hiyo ingine utakanyaga kwake. And I can tell you, God has not changed his promises and his purposes for your life. Hajabadilisha. This is what I came to tell you. And for you to get into that which God has promised, then you need to be very consistent. Allow me to look at two people and then we will try to end up. The first person I wanted to look at is a man called Noah. Noah is the best example of a consistent man that I love. Look at Noah. When God promised him that he is going to save him and his family because he was the only righteous man I love Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 9. Genesis 6 verse na, number 9. New King James Version, please. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. NKJV. The Bible says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a what? He was a just man. Perfect in his generation. Look at this guy. He was two things. One, he was a just man, meaning he was righteous. Number two, he was, come on, he was what? Perfect. Tell me, mungu akisema wewe ni perfect. Unafikiria ni chocha? Hakuna chocha? He means exactly you're perfect. Not today my message sounds humorous, but I have a point that I must deliver. And that is the way it came. Hakwa namu enjoy. Ah ah. He was really a perfect man. Yeah? Just like he says about Job in Job chapter 1. That Job was upright, blameless. He feared God and shunned away from evil. He means everyone. That was Job. But look at it. How long did it take between when God says these words? And when he fulfills the promise of saving him from the wickedness that was in the world in the flood, it took 120 years. That is my message. How long did it take? 120 years. Did Job have every reason? I mean, did Noah have every reason to give up on God? And especially when people were mocking him. They were asking him, you crazy man, have you ever heard of something called an ark? You're a joker. Do you think this thing made of hardwood will float on water? This one. I can tell you the truth. Density demands he keep it a sink. You will die before us. That's what they were telling him. Waka mwambia, ushawa hisikia mvoi menyesha. Mito yote ikaja. 
all the hills zikaja maji ikapanda ikafika abadeas na hata ikifika abadeas tutaenda mount kenya na mount kilimanjaro tutajiokoa that's what we say 120 years pleading with everybody everybody seemed so adamant and so logical that it is not practical for rain to come down and fill the whole earth but you know when the promise of god was fulfilled biblia inasema maji ilikuwa inatoka mpaka chini ushaisikia mvua inanyesha kutoka chini you don't understand i'm talking we are used to rain falling from ya siku za noa ilikuwa inanyesha mpaka huku chini so it was rain from up and from and so the world was full was filled job had i mean noah had every reason to give up on god but for 120 years he was consistent no wonder he was the only man that was saved in the whole world praise the name of jesus bwana yesu atukuzwe number 2 enoch genesis chapter 5 the bible says verse number 24 genesis chapter 5 and verse number 24 The Bible says and Enoch walked with God. That is my first statement of interest. Enoch did what? Ukisikia he walked with God, he was so consistent. Hakuwa na kifafa ya kiroho, spiritual epilepsy. Tell your neighbor do not have spiritual epilepsy. Nimesema epilepsy. Usikuwe na kifafa ya kiroho. Ati leo umeokoka, unaruka mpaka unaguza hapa juu, alafu kesho unaanguka. Praise the name of Jesus. The next day unavyoma, siku hiyo ingine uko kwa shetani. Enoch walked consistently with God. Bible says for 365 years. Is it 365? I think I'm right. He walked with God and the Bible says as a result of his consistent and persistent walk with God Bible says 300 and eh hey, sijaona vizuri 65 thank you I was right for 365 years he walked with God as a result of that the Bible says the next verse uh, it says he was not for God took him Yaani ametembea na Mungu consistently mpaka Mungu akasema huyu jamaa amekuwa mwaminifu 365 years of consistent faithful walking. Ah, wacha nimchukue. Akamchukua. He's the only person who has never tasted death and will never taste death. He is even better than Jesus Christ. Better in quotes. Don't misquote me. Praise the name of Jesus. Even Jesus died. And every other person that was raised from the dead they died. Enoch never tasted death. Aliingia mbinguni kimwili mwili. Praise the name of Jesus. Consistent. He walked into heaven. Man. And this is what gives me confidence that being consistent with God is not in vain. Ninaweza kaa miaka 365 lakini siku moja sema siku moja. When God decides to show up for my case na kwambia ataniinua ataniingiza mahali nafaa kuwa Praise the name of Jesus This is what I'm talking about Discipline facilitates consistency Discipline facilitates consistency How disciplined are you Remember we have already said tuna sababu nyingi za kutosha ku give up on god but how disciplined are you how disciplined are you how determined are you because sometimes and in most cases the results do not just come immediately i can tell you mambo za mungu and this is what i have learned mambo za mungu Results has kujagi immediately most of the times over 90% of the times the results are not instant mm. it requires you to wait but the truth is victory 
is inconsistency. Wakati umekuwa consistent, the results are a sure guarantee. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, God said he will bless us. God called you millionaires. You remember we are raising a church of millionaires? Touch your neighbor, tell them, don't forget. You're the next millionaire. Praise the name of Jesus. Nobody told Jeff to that, and I needed him to hear that. Because Jeff, you are the next millionaire in making. Praise the name of Jesus. Don't forget. But you see, being made a millionaire does not happen pap. This is no pesa pap. I have no problem with family bank. Praise the Lord. In actual fact, I have an account with them. Yeah? I don't have a problem with them. But this is no pesa. It takes time for God to mold you, for God to build you, for God to make you. Mpaka ufike mahali, ukue sasa, milango yako imefunguka. Wanaisu wasifue sana. But one thing that I guarantee you, as you continue being consistent, the results will obviously be seen. And one of the things that I have been learning, and one of the things that God has been teaching me, is that consistency does two, many, two, two major things. Consistency with God does two things. One, consistency creates closeness. Ina tufanyanga tusikia tuko karibu na mungu. Let me ask you. When you have been consistently praying, and when you have not been praying, when do you feel closer to God? Higher. Let me ask you. When you have consistently given your tithe, by the way, ask your neighbor, when is the last time you gave your tithe? Okay, mumegoma na mimi. And when you have not given, when do you feel closer to God? Higher. I'll ask you the third one. You will still answer all of them. When you have taken time to sing praises and worship, even in your house, wachana na church, kwa konyumbani, wakati umiamuka umeshikwa na roho, ukaanza tukuimba, and when you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, on the wrong leg, when do you feel closer to God? Let me tell you. Consistency creates closeness. If you want to be close to God, make sure you are consistent with him. It is the same thing, even in love relationships. And you know a relationship with Jesus Christ is a love relationship. Amen? I'm still born again. I said it's a love. Yes. More loving and lovely and more romantic than the one you have with your wife or your husband. Yeah. It's the most romantic thing. Yeah. When is the last time you called your girlfriend the lily of the valleys? And yet, <laughs> unamuitaga yesu kila wakati. Yeah? The rose of Sharon. Yeah? Not the Sharon here. Praise the name of Jesus. I mean, the more we get consistent with him, the closer we, we become. Number two, consistency creates confidence. Consistency creates confidence. When you are consistent with God, you become confident that what he said, he will surely do. Praise the name of Jesus. Suppose you're in love with your girlfriend. And every three months you have a breakup. Alafu muna pendana miezi igine bili. Alafu muna breakup. Alafu muna pendana miezi igine tatu. Alafu muna breakup. Can you trust such a boyfriend? Never. But if you've been in a love relationship a year, miakambili, 
tatu. I can tell you the reason why I decided to marry her is because she was consistent with me for five years. Imagine we did msichana moja, solo, moja. Five years. Five. And she never threatened to leave me, not even one day. Praise God. That's why even if she threatens me today, I am not scared. I say, Maga, kama haku niacha wakati huo. Na atiku kuwa nakakitu. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. You know, consistency creates confidence. It's the same thing with God. The more consistent you are, the more you get assured of the promises of God being fulfilled in your life. Tell your neighbor, you better be consistent with God. Let me, let me ask you. Let me, let me try to finish up with this one. Let me ask you. The story about the Hebrew boys. The four of them. And then I close with that. There was Daniel. There was Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Let me ask you. Why were these so, boys so confident with God? Look at Daniel. Bible says... An ambiwa, I think it's in Daniel chapter 8. An ambiwa that if you keep on praying to that so called God of yours, I will throw you into the den of lions. And this is not a threat. And the lions were made to fast so that they can feast on him. What did Daniel do? Biblia inasema, Daniel consistently like he used to do goes to his window that faces Jerusalem. This should be in uh, this should be in sasa hizi vitu zangu zinaenda wapi? The book of Daniel chapter number 6 and verse 10. Daniel prays three times every day, not facing the opposite side, but facing Jerusalem where King Darius sat. Why was he doing that? One, because it was his tabia to do that. It was his routine to pray three times every day. Number two, I am sure. He wanted King Darius to know that he's actually facing Jerusalem and praying. Alikuwa nataka watu wale ambao walikuwa wanamchimba wasikie akiomba. Ndio waende wakaambia mfalme. Why? Because he knew one thing that God will actually save him from the lions. He was so confident. Did God save him? He did. For real. And the Bible says, when he was, I, I, love, I love the story. And I love reading it. There's a place in Asema, you know, when, when the king was forced to throw Daniel into the den, he said that the God who you serve will surely save you. And I, saw me. I wish I would be able, I wish I had time. I had no plan to say that. But there's a verse that says that. Asema, the God you serve will do what? Surely save you from the lion's mouth. He was so confident. Even the king himself. And true to the word, Daniel was saved. But what happens? The guys that had betrayed him, wakati walirushwa, did they even get to the bottom? Biblia inasema, mifupa yao ilikuwa inavunjwa, vunjwa kwa hewa. By the lions. Now, Jews request me to talk fasting. Praise the name of Jesus. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know? Of course, together with Daniel. And it starts from Daniel chapter 1. I think it should be verse number 8. Where they purpose not to defile themselves with the king's food. And so they chose to eat vegetables. You know? You remember that? They said, We cannot take the king's wine. That's why I don't take wine. <laughs> we cannot take the king's wine. You didn't hear what I said. Say that's why I don't take. Because even Daniel refused to take it. And he was actually fatter 
after taking wine. You don't have to take wine to look healthy. I thought somebody would say, yes! Praise the name of Jesus. You don't have to do what? They refuse to take it. They refuse to take meat. Wakasema wapewa serious. Yes. Bibi na zita pals. Pals are serious. Legumes. The seeds of legumes. Walikuwa nakula mbosho, kamande, ndengu. And they were given water. And jahe. Yes, and jahe. Praise the name of Jesus. That thing that you don't like, you say it tastes like soil. Jahe. That's what made them look ten times better. Tell your neighbor, eat njahe. Praise the name of Jesus. Did they hear? Tell them, eat jahe like lack of importance. Praise the name of Jesus. It will make you look healthy. Yes. If you see me and Shem, we eat njahe. That's why we look healthy. I tell you the truth. Ask Eunice. Wana sana. Are we together? After 10 days, they were actually looking much better. Now, let me ask you. Is it logical that you, in 10 days, have a noticeable change in your appearance? 10 days. Sikukumi peke yake. Yani, leo pasta uamwe sikuli nyama tena. Na siyo siku fast because uki fast unapata wrinkles. Yeah? Can I teach you something? If you want to lose weight, don't just fast. If you fast, muliyako itasag. Especially sisters. Wako wapi? Wacha ni kuja hapa diokuna sisters wengi. You know, if you want to lose weight nicely, don't go fasting. As in, usikose kukula. Take care of what you eat. Just don't eat carbs. Eat vegetables and legumes. Muliyako itashrink pole pole. Ukikosa kukula kitu chochote, unapata umesagu huku, umesagu huku, umesagu huku. That's what happened. But look at Daniel. They were eating. So their bodies were not sagging. They were becoming more handsome. But in a record 10 days, that can only be miraculous. Praise the name of Jesus. The confidence they had in, in God. And after 10 days, they were told, now, if you don't bow down to the golden image, Imagine, the same people they told, if you don't bow down to the golden image, we will surely throw you into the burning furnace. Na moto ikaongezewa mara saba. Seven times hotter. What gave them confidence ya kwambia mfalme? Let it be known unto you, O king. There's a verse that says that. I think it's in Daniel chapter 3. There's a verse that says, let it be known unto you, O king, that concerning this matter we need not answer you. Because the God we serve is well able to save us from your fiery furnace. But in no ways are we going to bow down to your like, gods or even the great, graven image. Now, But even if he doesn't, we will still not bow down. But did God save them? Come on church, I'm talking to you. Did God save them? He did. No doubt. Why? Because they were consistent with their work with God. Let me tell you, consistency builds you such confidence that you're 100% guaranteed that what God promised, he will surely do. For the first time in my preaching, allow me to finish with a quote. Praise God. Are you ready for the quote? Yes? Now I'm preaching like a Nairobi preacher. Nairobi <laughs> Marizaga na quote. So allow me to finish with a quote. It is not what you occasionally do that changes your life. It's not what you occasionally do that changes your life. It is what you do habitually. It's what you do habitually. Habitually means as a habit. You develop a habit of doing it. It's what you do habitually. Perpetually, perpetually means consistently and constantly. Okay? Consistently and constantly. It's what you do habitually, perpetually, and perennially. Perennially means doing it permanently over a long time. Okay? Permanently. 
is what you do habitually, perpetually, and perennially. That changes your life and destiny. That changes your life and destiny. That's a very good way of ending my sermon. Do you want to see? Okay, let me read it the last time. It is not what you do occasionally that changes your life. It is what you do habitually, perpetually, and perennially that changes your life and destiny. That changes your life and destiny. How consistent are we with God? Do you want to see results in your life? Then your faith in God must be consistent. Do you want to see God lift you up? Then you must be very consistent in your walk with God. Do you want to experience miracles? I can tell you, you've got to be very consistent with God. You've got to be very consistent in your prayers. You've got to be very consistent in your reading of the word. The only way to become what God wants you to be is to be consistent with him. Paul tells us, Philippians 2 verse 12, he says, again, just like you have obeyed, not only in my presence, but much more so in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Praise the name of Jesus. I'll ask you to stand up.